It's Brian Preston, the money guy. I can already see, you know, when when Morpheus and Reby are naming this, this is going to be the segment, the highlight clip that gets the most comments. Right. Is the downside of the fire movement? I can already hear them. They're coming out. You, you can practically the, hear the stampede you, of them you, running you can towards hear the, the door. The, uh, the the keys chirping on the comments. So section. let's go through these. The first one, and I because this is part of the measure twice, cut once. It's not that I'm against you leaving the workforce or making this change early. It's just that I want to make sure you turned over every mm-hmm. stone so you don't make a mistake and have regret. Yep. The first one is, so think about this. Oh gosh! I, I mean, this is the visual. I already know where this, al- this analogy is Because I going. talked about it in pre in pre-show, is that you go to because we all go to parties, okay? And you, you you're like, should I get there early? Should I get there right at time? Do I get there early? Do I get there a little late? Let the fire get. Well, why do? Why is it called fashionably late? Why do you show up at parties? Because you know the beginning of all parties. It's going to be lame. Somebody <laughs> is going to be lame because you're going to get there. You're going to help the host set up some stuff. And then, you know, and it really is, even with an adults, it kind of becomes like seventh grade and eighth grade dances because the guys are going to be on one side of the room. The girls are going to be on the other side. It's a lame party. And that's kind of how you're, if you're looking at the analogy of life and your workforce, that's kind of how things happen. That's how the early years are. So the music starts, the DJ starts playing music that everybody likes. The girls come from the left, the guys come from the right, and they get together and start dancing together. The party starts heating up. You fire people. I just want you to measure twice, cut once. Because you're kind of the people like, well, they're dancing together now. Time, Time to get to out go of here. Because <laughs> what I'm saying about it, here's the point of this. Your peak earning years are 45 to 64. Mm-hmm. I pulled that from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And, and, and the thing is, is that I just want you to think about the fact that that is a huge stat. You're making your biggest money, 45 to 64, but there's a lot of you who are saying, I'm out of here. Yep. You know, And that's right as the party's heating up, you're walking away. So you need to make sure you are okay with that yep. and you've thought about that. And don't mishear us and think that we're saying that making the most amount of money is the thing you ought to do. It's just, it's water that once it gets down the hill, you might not be able to get it back up the hill. So make sure that you understand the repercussion of making that decision to exit early. Well, and that's why I'm going to do these a little out of order because I think you just made a great transition point. I had a father. I've told you guys, this impacted my whole way I think about the money, the way I think about money, the way I think about success, is I had a father who was laid off in the eighth grade, Mm -hmm. rocked our world. And what I remember dad being so stressed about was he got laid off. So this was an involuntary layoff because they were moving in a completely different direction. They got out of the business that he was a manager in. And he was in his mid forties, and I remember him lamenting, "Who wants a forty-year-old who is making this much money?" So that's why it is one of those things. There is n- maybe there is no turning back when you make this decision. Not exactly only right. in your peak earning years, but there's a chance that once you go through this transition gateway, you won't be able to get back to where you are. That's because right. even like IT people, there's a lot of people um, in IT or so forth. A year and a half, two years, the technology has changed, has changed on yeah. you. So, so, so think about those things. And that leads to, and, and this, this is a great segue. I didn't plan for this. We should have done this in pro, pre-prep. No, no, I had it all but, up here. This was all on purpose. But so. here's the other thing. I will tell you guys, I am now old enough. I'm in my, getting to be in my mid to late 40s. And I've been in the industry. I'm in my third decade of mm-hmm. doing this. And look, we talk about 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours to become get mastery, to become an expert. For some professions that require you know, education, experience, you might not be able to actually start making your footprint stand out or your your fingerprints all over the industry as a whole until you're 20 years into That's right. it, 25 years. And I, f- I finally feel like my voice is making an impact in the financial mm-hmm. world. So I don't know that I have, and this is this is just a philosophical thing. I want people to think about it. If, you, if this matters to you, if you're working in some type of field where you have impact on, as an expert in the profession... Is it okay that you're walking away from that? I mean, that's just something I think people ought to consider. Again, you got to think about what's the, you know, you have to define what's the purpose you're here on this earth. And you might have something that's worth sharing. Something's worth being a high impact expert. And yes, you might be now going to go teach at school or be a, a tutor or something. But if you were actually shaping the direction of this field, is it better? It's just something to measure and That's think right. about. Um, and then we talked about, and th- oh, I'll let you lead into this one because you got into trouble <laughs> well, last time we well, did this fire is, content. This is maybe uh, the most controversial downside to fire. Um, and, you know, here's the big question that we have to ask is if you're a participant fire and you exit the workforce early, 
are there negative health impacts associated yeah. with that? Uh, that maybe would have been a better way for us to have framed the question, maybe than the way that we did. I said, hey, if you retire early, you're going to die. You die. That's not really what we're trying to say. <laughs> However, you know, anecdotally, and we both have personal stories. We've worked with clients. We have loved ones and family members. You have to make sure that you measure, again, measure twice, two, three, four times to understand what it is that you're retiring to, not just what it is you're retiring away from. Because if you retire to nothing, yeah. there might be some unintended consequences, whether it be cognitively or motivationally or whatever. You need to understand what those impacts are and how that's going to affect the enjoyment that you're able to experience throughout your retirement life. The stat that I think people get upset about makes their, their hair stand up on their neck is that there's a study out there that if you take your Social Security early, men mm -hmm. especially, there's a 20% more increase in mortality. Right. But here's what I think these stats don't tell you. You don't know, did these people take Social Security early because they knew they were already sick. They knew something was wrong. Were they already, you know, was there lifestyle things that were already impacting? Because I think that stat can be very misleading. But it does lead to, you said it perfectly, Bo, is that everybody needs to kind of what wakes you up in the morning and gives you purpose. We had Fritz on from the Retirement Manifesto, yep. and he was so generous to us that if you go out to moneyguy.com, we have a brand new resource section, and Fritz shared with us the 10, Compam Ten Commandments of Retirement. Mm -hmm. You got to go download that if this is something you're considering, because it talks about one of them is know what you're retiring to and even yep. get into hobbies and other things before, before you, you retire. Right. So you're not just waking up thinking a, a good retirement plan is not the first two months I plan on watching all Judge Judy all the time. Not going to be a fulfilling right. retirement. You got to know what you're working towards. And Bo, that's probably a great segue is kind of talking about what we're doing. And now we have some uh, some pretty big announcements. Yeah, we, we have created something new and something exciting and something that is live for you guys now. Do you want to do a... Uh, we should, you did I it in pre-show. You, you do did it. it in pre-show. Drum so, roll, okay. please. Uh, we create uh, charts and illustrations and graphs and checklists and spreadsheets and all these different things, resources that we think can help you add abundance to your financial life. And they are all now available on our website. You can go out to moneyguide.com. You can click on our resource page. You can see all of the resources that we currently have made available. And we're going to be adding to them. As we come up with new ideas, as we have new illustrations we think that are valuable for you guys, we are going to put them out there. So go out to moneyguide.com. Click on our resource page. There's going to be a great way for you to get your hand on the free content that's going to help you impact your financial life for the better. Yeah, we've already mentioned 10 Commandments of Retirement yep. from Fritz and Retirement Manifesto is going to be on there. A lot of the stuff when I talk about the dollar turning to 88, mm -hmm. you know, the power of compounding, that stuff's yep. out there. There's so many things that you got to go to moneyguy.com and get this resource. This also helps us we logistically sending out the email updates. This is so much better if you just get it on your own time when you want it That's instead right. of creating some process and burying it in your email inbox somewhere. Now you just all 24-7, seven, seven days a week. I mean, we were like Waffle House. The resources are there. So keep it going. <laughs> then that like leads Waffle to, House. well, you you said it. Use the word abundance. Mm -hmm. When we have this whole thing internally, we talk about the abundance cycle where you come here, we completely give it away. I had a troll. This, this guy crawled out of a bridge, was beating up on us. And I was like, guess what? Check's in the mail. I'm sending you the refund check for what you paid. <laughs> and, you know, and I can say that very comfortably because... We give away tons of free advice. This is your resource. You come, and it's part of the abundance cycle. We give it away for free on purpose because we want you to come, learn, apply, grow. And then at some point, you're going to reach such a level of success, you go, I can't do this on my, right. on my own anymore. And that's when you'll say, I need to have somebody that can help me do this measure twice, cut once. And you're going to think about the Money Guy Show and the financial planners from Abound Wealth. That's right. And that's, that does complete the abundance cycle. And we could not do this without you guys. And we feel so appreciative. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we started this in 2006. It continues to bear fruit. It started as an online classroom, but it has turned out to be a great way for us to meet people all across the country. So thank you. Thank you. I'm Brian Preston. My co-host, Mr. Bo Hansen. Money Guy Team, out.